first video from Unit 2, which is about uh, mainly the civilizations of the Middle East. We're going to focus on Mesopotamia and on uh, Egypt, but we'll also talk about uh, Judaism, the first monotheistic religion, and we're going to talk about the Phoenicians. Uh, this first video is going to compare Mesopotamia and Egypt in a lot of different ways. There will also be some supplemental activities that will get more in-depth into uh, these two areas, especially with the languages, and we're going to make our own cuneiform. Of course, we really don't have styluses. I just took some wooden chopsticks and sharpened them, but, you know, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, you'll get the idea, and we'll get to play with clay. That's a lot of fun, don't you think? Okay, so here's the first lesson on uh, the comparison between Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. Hope you enjoy. All right, here is the PowerPoint slides and the presentation on Mesopotamia and Egypt, and we're just going to do a general comparison of those two civilizations. Here's your SOL. We'll be talking about uh, where the civilizations are in time and place, uh, describing the development of social, political, and economic patterns, including the fact that they had slavery. Uh, we'll be explaining their religions, and we'll talk about the development of languages and writing. And of course, we'll get a lot more in-depth into that in class. Okay, so what I would like for you to do right now is to pause the video after uh, you read this question. I want to know, what do you know about Mesopotamia and Egypt before we start? Okay, so pause the video and then answer these. And then when you think you've got some good answers, we'll come back and we'll see what you know and then what you learned. right here on your notes. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the geography of the Fertile Crescent and just the fact that why this whole area is called the Fertile Crescent. It used to be the area was just between uh, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, but scientists and historians today sort of take in the entire Middle East into uh, the, the Lower Nile River. And so it's all, that's northern Egypt right here. And this right here is uh, Mesopotamia. So the place is sometimes called the birthplace of civilization. That's why it gets the name Cradle of Civilization. We also know that it had rich soil and water, uh, which were, you know, very important if you're going to have agriculture and support large civilizations. Often, uh, these areas had natural protection, especially in the case of the Nile and Egypt. Uh, Mesopotamia was much more open to invasion, and so that became an issue for them. So Mesopotamia. First, let's break down the word. Meso means middle. Potamia means rivers. So when you put that all together, basically what you get is the land between the rivers. Now the two rivers that we're talking about here are the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The Tigris river is here on top. The Euphrates is the lower river. Again, after you read this question, please pause the video and try to answer the question. And I'm asking you why you think the Fertile Crescent is the uh, cradle of civilization. Why does it have the name Fertile Crescent? Okay, pause the video and answer right here. All right, Egyptian civilization is built around the Nile River. Now, uh, as you can see, not much exists very far away from the river, and there's reasons for that. Number one, the, the Nile is the world's longest river. The Amazon has the most volume, but in terms of length, the uh, Nile has been declared the winner of that battle. The Nile River, just like the Shenandoah River, flows north, and it is surrounded by deserts. That's that natural protection that we were talking about. Uh, the Sahara Desert, which is the world's largest desert, and the Arabian Desert made it very tough to invade Egypt. If you look at the satellite map up here, you can see right along the river is very green, and uh, beside of it is certainly, 
certainly filled with uh, a lot of sand and desert. Okay, so again, pause the video after you read this question. Create some reasons for what you see uh, in the satellite picture of the Nile River Valley. Why is it like that on the satellite picture that you just saw? Right here on your notes. Okay, so let's talk about some of the positives and negatives of Mesopotamia. Some of the positives. It had fertile soil for growing crops. It had a great water supply for transportation and survival. And it was at a great location for trade. Now, what were some of the negatives of the geography? It flooded irregularly. And so the people of Mesopotamia never knew when this was going to happen. And because of that, they were very open to invasion. And as a matter of fact, it will be invaded over and over again. Because of this, the people of Mesopotamia are going to be pessimistic. In other words, they're going to see things in a negative light. Uh, but that can happen to you when a lot of bad things happen over and over again. When you get this a bunch you feel like this a bunch and that sort of sums up the way uh, Mesopotamia felt about things and you're even going to see that in their gods and their uh, goddesses which they viewed negatively as well okay so what are the positive and negatives of Egypt <clears throat> okay the the positives of the of the Nile River Valley is, is that the fertile soil around the Nile was excellent for agriculture they had a great water supply around the river. And this was something that was very important. The river flooded at the same time every year. The Egyptians knew it was coming. And as a matter of fact, that is what left behind a very rich soil called Kemet, which they grew their crops in. But because of this, it allowed the Egyptians, the regularity of this allowed the Egyptians to be a very positive people. Now, one other really big positive for the Nile River Valley is it had natural protection. The deserts could be a negative, but they were also a positive. It's hard to bring an invading army across big deserts. Also, the cataracts provided protection. What were the negatives of the geography? The only really good soil for growing crops in is right around the river. So your growing is somewhat limited. Dry seasons can be very, very long. Uh, around the Nile River and so irrigation became necessary and some of the irrigation projects were quite quite extensive trade could also be tough because the deserts that kept armies away sometimes also kept trade caravans away but the bottom when you're a positive people you feel pretty good about things And that sort of sums up the Egyptians. They were very, very positive people. Right. If you would, in this little chart on your notes, answer the question about what are the advantages and disadvantages of the geography of both Mesopotamia and Egypt. Okay, so what were the big ideas of this video? What did I want you to get out of it? Number one, I want you to remember that the Fertile Crescent is where civilizations start. The second big idea is that Mesopotamia was open to invasion because it had almost no natural protection. And the third idea is that Egypt, Egypt had a great deal of natural protection with its deserts and cataracts. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Please keep uh, watching, keep up with your notes. See you at the next one.